And when I picked up the phone, he said, Hi, I want to review your insurance information from that car accident you had last week. And, like, that was news to me because <laughs> I don't drive. Um, I don't drive to prevent an accident. So, but I, I knew it was a scammer, so I wanted to keep him going for a little bit. So I was like, Oh, I remember. Was that the car accident where I died? And he said, Yes. He wasn't, he wasn't even listening to me. We ended up talking for a very long time. He, he ended up being a nice guy. His name was Alex. And about 30 minutes in, he was like, hey, will you be my girlfriend? And I was like, will you marry me, Alex? And then he hung up the phone. Uh, which is exactly how every single proposal has ever gone in my life. So basically what I'm saying is, Alex, if you're still out there, I am still available. And my number is still the same. Um, don't be a stranger, Alex. Don't be a stranger is such an interesting phrase when you think about it, because it's something you only say to strangers. It's a very less needy way to express your desire. Like, you could say, please call me, but you say, don't be a stranger. The power is only on you to not be a stranger. Come into my life. I want you, Alex. Oh my gosh. But there are deceitful people out there. There are mean people. I was walking the other day and I got to an intersection and I waited to the sign to tell me to cross and it happened. And then when I was crossing, this car wanted to turn right but couldn't do it because I was in the intersection. And when I completed the cross, the driver of the car pulled the car up, rolled down his car window, leaned out the window and shouted at me. And he said, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And everyone, I'm a pretty pleasant person, normally. <laughs> but this gentleman really upset me. So what I yelled back at him was, you don't even want to know. So much is wrong with me. You don't even want to know, sir. My fiance, Alex, is a phone scammer. <laughs> Emails like, we just wanted to check in in case this was fraud. I was like, oh, how helpful. Thanks, Bank of America. But now when I get these emails, I'm like, Bank of America, you are bullying me. <laughs> uh, case in point, uh, a few days ago, I was trying to just buy $35 worth of books from Barnes & Noble, and the transaction wasn't going through. And I was like, what is going on? And I kept pressing the pay button, and it wouldn't work. And right at that moment, I got an email from Bank of America, and they're like, Stacy. Is this you? This seems suspicious. There's a charge at 9-11 p.m. from Barnes & Noble. It's like, I read, Bank of America, okay? I, I read. You don't think I read. I can read. Like, my God, Bank of America, stop judging me. When just a few days prior, I went into Best Buy, bought a new computer and a PS4. They were like, that checks out. It's like, no, no, Bank of America, stop making me do bad things. I do spend a lot of time on my computer, though, um, which m probably doesn't shock anyone here. Um, but uh, I, my favorite thing about my computer is that every day, at the same time every day, I get a little pop-up from my computer, and it says, hello. Do you want to schedule an update for tomorrow? And I always click the button, remind me tomorrow. <laughs> People think computers are so smart, but computers aren't smart enough to realize that tomorrow is always a day away. <laughs> it will always be tomorrow. I always click, remind me tomorrow. I've clicked it every day for over two years. <laughs> the computer's never getting updated. It hasn't caught up yet. And people think they're gonna take over the world. Nope. It's never tomorrow. I'm never going to update the computer. And the funniest part is that the computer thinks I'm going to update the computer when I don't even update myself. Like, everyone, look at me. Really look at me. Look at my face. Thank you. But case in point, do you think I'm taking a multivitamin? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm 
I'm, I'm really not. I'm not updating the computer. I'm not updating me. I, I don't do things that are good for me. I should, but I don't. And, and I think it's because whenever I or anyone around me has ever said the phrase, this is good for me, it's always in anger or sadness or both. Um, a year ago, I was dragged into Rock Creek Park at... I'm sorry, back up. That sounds like I was kidnapped and I wasn't. Um, I willingly went with a friend to Rock Creek Park in D.C. to hike. And about 15 minutes in, I was like grabbing at the trees, breathing heavily, uh, staggering around. And my friend was like, do you just want to wait in the car? And I was like, this is good for me. And then I waited in the car. Um, I wasn't ever really athletic. Even when I was a kid, I wasn't athletic. Um, one of my old friends is here, Anthony, he can tell you. But th this is the thing that I'm trying to say. I was never the athletic kid. I was always... The book kid. I read Bank of America. I read. But I think I read because I found a hack. A hack that makes every book it makes sense in this hack. And I'm going to tell this hack to you all. Every book you would read for any English literature class is about one topic. And that topic is boy drama. And no, I don't mean drama about boys. I mean boys in their communities causing drama. And I see some some suspicious looks. Okay, Lord of the Flies, boy drama hardcore. Oh my god. Moby Dick, whale boy drama. A boy and a whale who's a boy causing drama. I mean so much drama. Catcher in the Rye, emo boy drama, my personal favorite. Uh, there's just so much boy drama. Uh, when I was a kid, Everyone said that I was mature for my age, which is a really nice code word for sad. And, um, and I, uh, being mature for my age, sad, I, um, I overanalyzed a lot of things. Has anyone seen the movie, uh, the, song of mu or the Sound of Music? Yeah. Yes. Oh, almost everyone. So everyone who has seen that movie will know the song. These are a few of my favorite things, which some of you might be saying, oh, that's a lovely song, but for me... Mature for my age, I was like, this song doesn't make any sense. Because if you really listen to the lyrics, you know that the main character is singing about a list of the most mundane things that has ever been created in the world. There's a line of the song where she's singing about her favorite things, and she says, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. And it's like, no one likes the rain, and